someone suggested in the comments that they wanted me to do a HIC column packing video. So that's what I'm going to do today. This is Fettel HP chromatography resin. We're going to start by measuring the slurry content of what's in the bottle. And we'll do this by resuspending the resin in the solution that it's in in the bottle and then pouring it into a graduated cylinder. I'm looking for about 20 mils here, but it doesn't really matter. We're just gonna divide one number by the next. All right, we're gonna let that settle overnight. So I'm gonna put a piece of parafilm on top. I'm gonna use this XK26 column for the pack. The first thing we're gonna do is check the top adapter to make sure there's no obvious damage to it. Then we're going to start unscrewing this black knob on the top. We're going to take it all the way off. We want to pull the central stem out from the middle of the column. And then we want to look at this connection here between the red distributor and the central stem. This is a very important connection. If it's not snug, it could cause leaks later. Then we're gonna check the filter screen. We're gonna pop it off to make sure there's no damage and that we have the support screen as well. You wanna be careful that you're not using one of these tubing weight screens. They're the exact same size and pretty much look the same way. The tubing weight filter screens won't hold the resin back. So you'll notice that the tubing weight screens are a much coarser thread than the column screen. So get rid of any of tubing weight screens you might have in the lab so you don't confuse them. I've made that mistake myself. When we put the filter screen back on, we want to make sure that it fits snugly onto the adapter. I mean, sorry, the distributor. And then we're going to take the black nut and we're going to start threading it back onto the central stem once we have the gasket fit over it there just right. This took me a second. There we go. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is check the bottom adapter pretty much for the same thing. We want to make sure that we're using the right screen, there's no damage to it, and that the distributor and central stem have a nice snug connection. Looks good. And then we'll just put it back together. I wanted to show you these column adapters that exist so you can turn another column into a packing reservoir. If you're packing a high column, so these are XK2620s. So if you were gonna pack like a 19 centimeter high column, you'd wanna use one of these adapters. And the other half, the other column can be used as a reservoir. The graduated cylinder sat overnight. We can see that the resin settled to 15 mils and the liquid is up to 20, which means it's a 75% slurry. To pack this column, we're gonna need the resin that's in the bottle some water and a water bottle that has a little spout on it, the resin that was in the graduated cylinder, a syringe, and an adapter that will allow us to attach the syringe to the column. All right, we're going to fill the syringe with some water now, and we're going to use this 1 16th inch female to female fitting to attach it to the column. Let's get rid of the air in the syringe and then attach it to the column. Then we'll push on the syringe gently to fill the bottom adapter with water. Here's a look down the column into the adapter. You can see me pushing on the syringe. The next thing we need to do is figure out how much resin we're going to use. First, we'll find the volume of the column per centimeter. The column is 2.6 centimeters wide, so we'll multiply the radius squared times pi. It's 5.6 mils per centimeter. I want the column height to be 8 centimeters, so multiply 8 times 5.6. The column bed, when we're done, should be 45 mils. 
we will crush the resin 15%. So we'll multiply 45 times 1.15. The volume of the bed before we crush it is going to be 52 mils. Finally, we measured a slurry content of 75%. So we're gonna divide 52 mils by 0 0.75 to get 69 mils of slurry that we need to measure out. Now that we've done the calculation, I poured out 69 mils into a graduated cylinder and then poured it into the empty column. I'll rinse the cylinder out a couple times with the squirt bottle. I'm trying to use as little volume as possible so that I can still see the slurry at the top of the column so you know it doesn't go into the red part. I can still see some daylight right here. Then I'm going to take the top adapter and I'm going to secure it in place by screwing it down. Then I'm going to press the black clippy thing which will allow me to slide the adapter down on top of the slurry and I'm going to leave a millimeter or two of space between the slurry and the adapter. Then I'm going to secure the black nut on top, which will make the column watertight. Then I'm going to press on the syringe, which will expel the last bit of air by pushing liquid up from the bottom of the column out through the top. There. All right. We're good to go to put it on the chromatography system. One of the things we haven't done so far is to figure out what flow rate we're going to run the new column at. So we'll look in the instruction booklet and we will find a recommended flow rate that's a linear flow rate, which is in centimeters per hour. For the new column, we're going to have to calculate what the flow rate is in mils per minute. All right, so we know the linear flow rate, but we need to convert it to the volumetric flow rate. We do this by multiplying the linear flow rate by the cross-sectional area, or the mils per centimeter of the column, and then dividing that by the total number of minutes in an hour, 60. So for our column, we're gonna multiply 100 by 5.3, we figured that out earlier, and we're gonna divide it by 60. This ends up being 8.8 .8 mils per minute. The reason we do this is that the residence time on the column is the same regardless of the column size. So for a column diameter of 0.5 centimeters, we would end up with a volumetric flow rate of 0.33 mils per minute. And for a column diameter of 14 centimeters, it, the volumetric flow rate would be 256 mils per minute. But the linear flow rate for the column we're packing or the other two columns would still be the same, 100 centimeters an hour. This is really important as we scale up or scale down, and which is why in chromatography, um, we focus a lot on linear flow rate, and that's also why uh, it's in the instruction booklet, linear flow rate. Uh, they don't know what size column you're packing, right? Okay, so I also just want to make one more comment about beads in a slurry as they settle. So this is an exaggerated example, but if you let the beads settle overnight on the column, you'll end up with uneven distribution. This will affect your results, like if you're trying to analytically look at something, but it'll also give you higher back pressure because the smaller beads are on top. So it's preferable to try to pack something using some kind of force, either flow or mechanically shoving the adapter onto the top of the resin bed. All right, so it's time to actually start packing the column. So notice that the resin hasn't settled yet. I have lots of water on top of the chromatography system. I also have a syringe plugged into the bottom of the column, even though you can't see it. So I'm gonna start by removing the bypass line on the chromatography system, and then I'm going to secure the top of the column into the injection valve. The chromatography system is currently running at 8.8 .8 mils a minute. Once I've done that, I'm gonna unscrew the top of the column just a little bit so that the system will continue to leak. Then I'm gonna push on the syringe so there's some upflow to get rid of the air. Then I'm gonna secure the connection at the injection valve, and then I'll finish by securing the connection at the UV meter. So I did this pack several times for this video. What I want you to see is that 
This is a time-lapse video for packing the column when the resin has a bunch of ethanol in it, that's on the left, and when it's completely equilibrated in water on the right. You'll notice that the resin settles almost immediately if it's completely in water. Once the resin bed is settled, it's time to lower the adapter. The first thing we're gonna do is measure the settle bed height and we'll find that I actually got it right the first time, so that's awesome. Then we'll mark where the resin bed settled to. This way, we'll know where to lower the adapter to after we hit the pause button on the chromatography system. Now we'll start lowering the adapter. The first thing we're gonna do is unscrew the nut at the top. This will allow liquids to flow around the outside of the upper adapter. Then we're gonna press the black clicky thing on the side of the column and try to push the adapter down. Sometimes you have to adjust the nut a little bit more than you'd think, and then you can lower the adapter so it's just on top of the resin bed. And then you're gonna secure the black nut on top just a little bit and make sure that the black clicky thing is engaged. And we're gonna start turning the like screw shaft on the upper adapter and tightening the black adapter kind of at the same time. And we do this to crush the resin just a little tiny bit. And if you get it right, then you should have no resin up on the top side above the red line of the adapter. And you should be a little bit below where you marked the stable resin bed. I like to run the column at a slower flow rate than what I packed it, so I changed the flow rate to 6.8 mils per minute, about 75% of what I packed it, and then I press the play button on the system. I stared at the column for a couple minutes thinking that I wanted the adapter just a little bit lower than the mark, so I did pretty much the same thing as before, paused the system loosened the nut on the top and then cranked down on the upper adapter just a little bit more and I think I compressed it just another millimeter or two which is exactly what I was looking for. I hope you enjoyed watching my video where I pack this fennel HB column and I really hope it helps with your purifications. Please leave a comment below if you want to or if you have any ideas for other videos.